How can I improve my spoken English? I am so frustrated. Practice. Practice, practice. Never pass up a chance to practice. So, what if you mix things up? Today is just practice. Tomorrow is another day. I am an American who has worked in two dozen countries and spent ten years in China, kept a home in Munich, Germany for twenty years, and lived several years in Chiang Mai, Thailand. So, I have had much experience with non-native speakers, such as you. First, you are probably not too bad at English. Second, you probably put too much pressure on yourself. Third, don't worry about your mistakes. They are building blocks. Fourth, choose an American, Canadian, Brit, Aussie, or Kiwi who you admire and say to yourself, Someday I want to talk one-on-one -on -one with that person in good English. Maybe that person is Barack Obama. Or maybe Catherine, Princess of Wales, or Warren Buffett the investment guru. Or maybe it is the basketball star, LeBron James. It doesn't matter. Your choice. In the meantime, everyone else you speak to in English is practice until you meet that special person. Always think this way. Every English speaker you meet is just practice until you sit down and talk to that one important person. Once you get yourself to think this way, this is just practice. It doesn't matter that you fail each and every day. It's just practice. So, enjoy your practice with its successes and failures. It's practice. Think of it as similar to playing basketball with a close friend in the local gym. You shoot. Sometimes you hit and sometimes you miss. Then he shoots. He hits or misses. Then you shoot again. Fifth. Again. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Relax. You're probably comparing yourself to native English speakers. Yes, it will be a while before you reach that level. Don't worry. You are only practicing. Do you think Babe Ruth, the American baseball hero of the 1920s and 1930s, hit a home run every time he came to the bat in baseball? No. During his best year, 1927, he hit 60 home runs with a 356 batting average. That mean he failed to do anything two threes of the time. But he practiced and kept trying. Do you think Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls basketball hero, scored a three-pointer every time he shot a basketball? The answer is no. He often missed a shot. Google says Jordan's field goal scoring percentage was less than 50%, and he got paid millions and is considered by many to be the best ever in the NBA. The secret was he shot a lot. And he missed a lot. He missed more than he hit. And he was one of the best. And he practiced daily. You need to do the same with speaking English. You need to practice a lot. Think for a minute. Basically, virtually every basketball player in the NBA is paid millions of dollars. Yet, close to half of these players lose more games than they win. This is true in most competitive sports. So quit worrying about saying the wrong word or mixing up a word or two. If players who are paid millions can fail to win half the time, quit worrying about stumbling over a word or two. The secret. Every time you try to speak English, you are practicing. You practice. You make a mistake. So what? You go home and learn from what didn't go as well as you hoped. 
then figure out how to make it better. I am lucky to live in Hawaii. Years ago, I wanted to learn Japanese. Every day I would go to Waikiki Beach and ask a Japanese tourist questions in Japanese, such as, What did you do yesterday? Tell me about your job. What do you plan to do in Hawaii? I would go home and learn from my mistakes. The next day, I would go back to the beach, meet another Japanese tourist, and have a new teacher for practicing Japanese. Step by step, my Japanese became better. You should do the same thing. You will not hit a home run the first time at bat. But, after twenty times, you will start to hit home runs with some consistency. Watch the movie Groundhog Day starring Bill Murray. Practice makes you better. There is no magic pill that you can take before you go to bed and wake up the next morning speaking fluent English. It takes practice. Think of learning English in the same way as if you said to me, I want to represent my country as an Olympic athlete. It will take commitment and practice. Plenty of both. Olympic athletes are chosen became of their ability, not because of who their father is or how rich they are. They commit to their goal, they focus, and they practice and practice until they become excellent. You can do the same. Commit to your goal of learning English and then keep practicing. My wife was probably much like you. She is a Hakka. She was born in a remote, tiny mountain village in China. One scholar describes Hakka as an impoverished and stigmatized subgroup. As a child, her simple home did not have running water or plumbing. Also, her job in the family was to lead the family water buffalo as it plowed the fields. When she came to the big city as a teen, she set a goal of learning English. Perhaps partly because she is Hakka, she felt learning English would aid her in meeting her goals in China. From then on, she never passed up an opportunity to try and learn English. That was how we met. For the record, our romance was slow, not instant. We were friends for a year before we had a first date, and then dated for three years before we became engaged. I am very, very proud of my wife. She is responsible and committed. As a newcomer to a big Chinese city, the opportunities to learn English were not obvious to her at first. Rather, she sought them out and then utilized them. She was proactive. She focused on learning English. My wife got up early each morning to watch the English television news from Hong Kong. She worked as a waitress in an international bar, an Irish bar in Guangzhou, to improve her English. She didn't miss a chance to assist Westerners shopping who she accidentally met in a local market. On Sundays, she awoke early to take a two-hour bus ride into the city center in order to go to an English corner session where she could practice English and sometimes talk with Westerners. She joined an English-speaking Toastmasters club to practice speaking English in front of a group. Please note, English is my wife's fourth language. Hakka is her native language. Hakka is her native language. Cantonese she learned on the streets of the city as a preteen and teenager. Mandarin she learned in school. English she learned in school. Seventeen years ago she came to Hawaii and started junior college. She studied hard. She said to me, Let's not get a TV set. I want to focus on my studies. So, we did not buy a TV. 
She went on to graduate at the top of her University of Hawaii undergraduate and graduate classes. She also studied for and did very well in the National CPA, Certified Public Accountant, exam. After graduation, she was sought after by several of the internationally recognized Big Four accounting firms. She accepted a position with one of the firms. There, she audited major banks and international firms. She sometimes was sent to other Hawaiian islands and to the U.S. mainland to work on special projects. On one occasion, she was sent with a first-class round-trip plane ticket to New York City for a week to work with an investment brokerage house preparing a new stock release. On another occasion, she was sent to San Francisco for a month to work with a Silicon Valley technology firm. Her firm also paid my expenses so that I could go along with her for the whole month. I enjoyed sightseeing and visiting old friends while she worked. After a few years in the public accounting field, she moved on to become the accounting manager of a famous Waikiki hotel. Right before COVID hit, she was offered and accepted a position as a manager in a business consulting firm. Now she advises and solves problems for her 25 American clients, various business firms in a variety of American industries. She oversees a team of a dozen in the Philippines that does the basic accounting while she resolves the more and more complex issues for her American clients and helps them achieve greater profitability. Also, she has a six-figure salary and interviews born in America American job candidates and directly oversees several consultants. I have no doubt she will continue to move upward. In addition, she is a caring mother of a toddler and the accountant for an NGO that helps Chinese immigrants acclimate to the USA. As a writer, I am a stay-at-home dad who takes care of our son while she is at work. I strongly believe if a man loves a woman, he should let her fully develop her skills, achieve her dreams, and shine in all aspects of life. So, I support her and encourage her as she follows her dreams and aspirations. Also, because she does not have a Chinese accent, many Americans are surprised to learn she was not born in the USA. One more thing, she is a well-rounded woman. Her hobbies in America have been jogging and Irish dance. She has completed several 42-kilometer Honolulu marathons and won several medals in an international Irish dance competition. My wife rock climbing, my wife reflecting on her childhood. Her comment, it is easy to succeed in America. All you have to do is work harder than everyone else. But you do have to work hard and use every opportunity to practice your skills. My wife started her childhood in a remote farm field, guiding a water buffalo, and now she is a manager in an American consulting firm. She committed to the goal of learning English, and she practiced. You can do the same. Start by practicing. I encourage you to keep trying. And don't worry about your mistakes. It is all about practice. Remember, what you are doing now is practice for the future. Don't worry. If you make a few mistakes today, tomorrow is another day. Also, I suggest you write my wife's above comment on your mirror and read it to yourself every morning. With practice, you will become an excellent English speaker. You can do it. Your English will get better. And you will realize business and financial success. But it will take commitment and practice. And you will probably have to say goodbye to your water buffalo. So go for it. I am on your side.